you have any question? Beginning. Uh, today uh, we are going to do continue what we done uh, what we have started last time. We were talking about how to calculate the equivalent load on the bearing when we have combination of thrust and radial load. Okay, and we said that the idea is not to find the resultant load, but depending on the ratio, the trend will be different for the small rate uh, thrust load, there will be no effect, and there will be an effect, as you remember. So the idea was to find how much is the equivalent load at certain axial load to radial load. So we told you that there is a new formula to do the sum. And we call the equivalent load is equal to factor x times b times the radial load plus slope of the line of y, y times the axial load. And we said that to find out those two factors, x and y, we need to consult table 11 dash. Okay? So this only applies to ball bearings. When they are what? And the combined load. So today, we will revise on this, and also we have an exercise on selecting a ball bearing, as well as a cylindrical roller bearing. To remind you, in this chapter we are not designing the bearings, we are selecting the bearings, so the idea is to calculate the capital rating based on the applied load <coughs> in the bearing, as well as the exact line of the line. So, calculate the rated load, C10. C10 is equal to an application factor, and we said this one is the nature of the load. Then we have, I will put it FD or FE, depending on the type of load. If I have a combined load, I have to calculate the equivalent load. If I have a radial load only, I will use the desired load. Then multiplied by, I initial the slide, divided by correction factor for reliability from 1 over A. If we said A has two values, A is equal 3 for ball bearing, and A is equal 10 over 3 for the cylindrical, and tab at all of it. Come on. XD is equal to the desired life to the rated life. And what is the rated life? We said it is one million cycle for ball and cylindrical, and 90 million cycle for tap roller bearings. Okay. Now we come to the correction factor for reliability. It is calculated following formula based on vital distribution and it requires knowing what the desired reliability is. So this is reliability. <coughs> okay? And by one over B. While those parameters, X naught, theta, and B, they are vital distribution parameters. And from where we get them? Table 11-6. We have two sets of parameters. We have manufacturing number one and manufacturing number two. Two for ball and cylindrical, while one for tab of power. Can you set the opposite? No. Manufacturer one is for 90 million cycles. Okay. okay, so now that was General, calculating 
seated. Now for equivalent load, whenever we have a combined loading, <coughs> I have to find the equivalent load, which as we said, is equal to V times X times the radial load on the bearing plus Y thrust load or axial load on the bearing. We have a procedure. We explain it last time. First, it's an iterative process, so first iteration. We start with assumption for FA over C0, and based on this, we get X and Y, then we calculate FE, and from there we calculate C10, and we select the bearing. After we select the bearing, we use C10, it's on C10, and it's on C0. From there, we calculate FA over C0. And based on this, we get the X and Y. And what we have, again, a new, FE new, FE. Again, you go back, calculate C10. Then what we do, compare. Compare what with what? The old one. Right? New one, new, calculated. C10. C10, with? The old C10. Rated. From the catalog. Right? So when you select, you get this C10. Let me put the red circle on it. So you will compare this one with this one, not this one. Right? Mm -hmm. You will compare the new calculated C10 <coughs> with this C10 in the catalog based on your selection. If the new, if this one is bigger, and this one means you have to do again a second iteration, select a new one. If the opposite, you start. Huh? The uh, the new C10 must be less than the old one. Less or equal? Uh. This we calculated one is less than the new yes. calculated. The newly calculated one is less than the catalog or equal. Catalog, you mean the table? Okay, so that was table one where we get x and y, and let's start in solving this problem. We need you to set in a group, try to read the statement, and in this problem we're going to do, and the objective of this problem is two things, uh, three things. Uh, how to select the cylindrical roller bearing, how to find the equivalent load and select a ball bearing when you have combined loads, how to determine the right location of bearings, where to put a cylindrical roller bearing, where to put a ball bearing. Okay, read the statement, look at the figure, discuss with your uh, friend next to you, <coughs> and I'll give you two minutes for that. You have to choose one of the cylindrical or, or you have one cylindrical, one ball, and you have to identify their location. Where you should put the cylindrical, where you should put the ball. You cannot just put them randomly. Oh. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
ما يتحرك يا دكتور نفس ال شافي ما يتحرك فوق تحت مزبك لا واحد عن واحد ما ما يقرأ You can look at the bearing housing You can come closer. You can take a picture of your mobile and. Uh, <laughs> Are we done? Discussion? I can give you three minutes actually. Right. So let's read the statement together. Jackson, you select a cylindrical roller bearing and a ball bearing for the vertical shaft. So the shaft is mounted vertically. So it is different actually when you mount vertically and horizontally. Okay, this is direction of weight. Which one? Different. Uh, direction of the, uh, gravity forces. Okay, uh, shown in the figure and identify the sides they should be mounted. So, where do I have to put ball bearing? Where should I put the cylindrical roller bearing? Any idea before where I have to put? Definitely, I have to look at the figure so to understand. Where should I put the bearings? Which which uh, which reaction would be the uh, stronger? You should put the ball uh, bearing, right? Uh, I think so. In which direction is the reaction? Is it radial or thrust? Radial. Uh, for radial, which which works better for radial? Ball or cylindrical? Cylindrical. cylindrical. Which works better for combined loads? Oh, oh, no. oh. Right. So now we, are, we agree that where I have no thrust load, I should use a cylindrical. Where I have a combined load, I should use the ball bearing. Right. Where, which side can carry thrust load? Which side cannot carry thrust load? <coughs> no, down. Uh, carry thrust load. Down. Down or up? A. Uh, down. A. A carries thrust load. Why? Because it's shoulders. It's, uh, it's down. Because it's, it's down? down? Shoulders. Because shoulders. Here we have the shoulders, huh? So if I have a force, the force would go from the shaft to the bearing, from the bearing the to, the house, through, to the housing, and through the shoulder. But there on top, the axial load goes down, and nothing is holding what? Bearing axially. So I have just shown a line like this, two lines. So the bearing is free to go up and down. No constraints to go up and down. Mm. The only constraint is the friction. No, no physical constraint. So, so which side I have to put the ball bearing? Down. Down. So now we agree that the ball bearing would be down, the cylindrical roller bearing would be up. And down we'll have two reaction loads, one radial, one thrust, while on top, I have only radial. Only radial. So, whenever we solve any problem, we have to start with a free, what? Free, but there you go. So, whenever we do, Whenever we start drawing the figure diagram, I have first to identify my coordinate system. I have to define the axes, their direction, and sense. So, we usually utilize x-axis along the shaft axis. Okay? So, I will use this as x-axis. This one, y-axis. Where is z? In or out? 
into the board or out of the board? Out. Out of the board. So x, y, z. So we use the right hand proof. Down. So now I put the coordinate system. Let me use different color to draw the shadow. Everybody diagram is for the shaft or the poly? <coughs> For the shaft, yeah, why? Shaft. Because I want to determine the reaction load on the shaft. So this is my shaft. This is point A, and this is point B. Okay. And now I have a force of five thousand on the pulley from the pulley tension. Five thousand and what? Three hundred and fourteen newton. And he said that this is acting <coughs> vertically, so there's a weight. Where does the weight would act? Down or up? Down. 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 And he gave me the weight of 890. Yes. So I have the weight 890. Okay. Now we agreed that A will carry what? The thrust load, huh? So at A we have combined load. I have radial load. I will call Re reaction, R for reaction, at A, <coughs> and the radius, okay? And I have axial load. So this I call it reaction at A, but it is along the x-axis or axial. What about at B? Radio. Only radio. So I will put reaction <coughs> at B, radio. Anything else for the feedback diagram? All the elements are complete? Yes, sir. Is there any force missing? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. What do you mean? Shoulders. The reaction of the shoulders. Any? Yes? If it can go up and down, how you have a reaction on the exact? Oh. Because it cannot go up and down, so we have a reaction. If it can go up and down, in this case, we don't have a reaction. What? So it cannot move uh, up and down. It cannot move up and down because you have a shoulder. Okay. Uh, now also the, bear, the the shaft bearing is mounted on the shaft, so there's no relative motion between the bearing and the shaft. Okay. There is no relative motion between the shaft and the bearing. Yes, it, it cannot. The, the oh, shaft okay. cannot slide on the bearing. Okay. Right. So now the second step is to determine what? The reaction loads, huh? Yes. Because these reaction loads actually the forces on what? Yeah, for the shaft. The, and they are the loads on yeah. bearings. So the bearing supports what? The reaction loads, huh? Yes. The bearing is supporting this load, not this load. Bearing A is carrying those two forces. Bearing B is carrying this force, not this force or this force. Mm. Yeah? So it's very important to find the reactions that they support. But in order to determine the reaction, we utilize equilibrium. So we have three equations. Summation of forces x should equal. Summation of forces in y should equal zero. And summation of moment about z axis also should be zero. So we have three equations. And how many unknowns? 3 m. So we are in a good shape. Let's start with the easiest. Summation of forces in x should equal 0. So I have 890. This is positive or negative? Positive. Positive. Positive, because you can see the positive x axis done, and the force is done. Minus uh, RAA. Why minus? Negative. Opposite yeah. direction. Of because the... I assume the direction of the reaction load. Upward. So, so this should be equal to zero. From here you can know that RAA is equal to 890 Newton. What does it mean eight not positive 890? Why it is not negative? Well, why I don't see a negative sign there? It means the assumed direction is correct or not? Yes. 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 So if you get the magnitude in positive, when you calculate, get it in positive, means your assumed direction is correct. 
Fine. So we are done with equation number one. We go to equation number three. Come on. Mm -hmm. Summation of moments should equal zero. So now we have the freedom to sum the moment about A or about B. We don't sum about different one. Yeah. Okay? Now, whenever you are in a quiz or an exam, make sure which side is of importance for you. Because sometimes the question asks you to select the ending on A only. Right? Mm -hmm. So it is easier to sum the moment at B and get the reaction at A in one step. Mm. Because if I sum at A, it means I'm finding B, then I have another additional step to find at A. Right? So be careful about this. In our case, we need to find for both. So summing at A or B doesn't matter. So let's sum at B. Summation of moments about B should equal to zero. So what do you have? Have R A. We have R A R. Yes. Um, R A A doesn't contribute to moment? No. No, because it's passing through the center. Moment yeah. R is zero. Five, three, four, two newt. R A R times what is the moment R? You have here from here to here is given. 27, sir? Plus 40.5 40. centimeters. 40.45 or 40.5 centimeters. So I can multiply this by 10 to minus 2 to have it in meat. This is positive or negative, Israel? Negative. Uh, this is negative. 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 Again, put your fingers in the direction of force. And this is the moment. Uh, so I go in. N is negative, sir. Because Z positive is. That's so. Uh, so I put here negative sign. The second moment is caused by <coughs> the 5,000. So here a plus or minus 5,340 times 13.5 into minus 2. Yes, yeah. okay. and the positive. This is plus or minus? Positive, because it's plus. outside. Okay. Pair of the plus sign. This should equal yeah. zero. zero. Okay, yeah, you can't find R A. Now, find me R A R. Uh, Doctor. Yes. To make sure the, the figure and. Uh, هو الشافت ممسوكها من تحت صح من الاي بس this shaft uh. is you are holding this shaft at B and at A uh -huh. okay but axially the axial movement uh. is constrained by A okay. for B there are no shoulders so for example if the temperature increase of this shaft let's, let's think about this as a beam uh -huh. mm -hmm. And the temperature has increased. Here it cannot extend, but in top it can extend. Okay. okay. Who extend? Not only the shaft. Shaft and the bed they move together. Uh -huh. Okay. So if you think about point B, the shaft and the bearing can go up or go down. Uh -huh. They can expand and contract. But that point A. You cannot go up or down. But they if should mean. There would be a relative uh, motion. No, I mean it's like this. Um, uh, let's look at it horizontally, just to try to understand. Imagine you have a beam. Okay? Then I have a bearing here and a bearing here. Okay? Okay. Now, for the housing, we we'll put constraints here. So this bearing, the outer part, cannot move in the axial position. So, okay. But for this part, I make it like this. But they, they put a constraint. No, no, it's like this. The line in the top is a reference line you see at the top. There's no constraint. Ah, okay. Okay. This is the line you see from the set, the arc. On this. And if I make a cut here, you will see this line. This is not line, this is <coughs> curved. And a cylinder, the edge of a cylinder. Mm -hmm. So now, 
if I want to push this in this direction, what will happen? The force would go from the shaft to bearing to house and cannot move anywhere. Yes. But if I move in this direction, it can go out. Everything can go out. Come on. Right. So, anybody got the reaction load? 178. So now we are done with bearing A. We have all the information. So this is simply FR, and this is simply FA. Okay? On bearing A. For bearing B, we use the second equation, summation of forces in Y should equal zero. So what do we have here? 5340 five, positive. Sir? RA negative. RA negative minus 1780 minus RB R equals to 0 from here. 3560. RB R equals 3560. Yeah. So now we have all the loads on bearings. So we agree that this will be cylindrical roller bearing, right? and those two loads will be carried by a ball bearing. I will start with the easiest. Which one is easy to select? Cylindrical. cylindrical. Why? Because you don't have iteration. So I'll just start with the cylindrical. And the cylindrical again, I use the same equation C10 equal AF times the desired load XD divided by XD to the power 1 over A. Now for the cylindrical roller bearing, A is equal to what? 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 10 over 3. Okay? 10 over 3. Right. From the question, AF is equal to what? Application factor. Uh, you can take two. No, you have to read. Uh, yes, yes, it's not it's not oh, right, it's not so 1.5. So 1.5. The loads, uh, last sentence, the loads are applied with light to moderate impact. So between light and moderate, the factor is going to be 1.5. This is table, what you know? Anybody remember? 11, 11 uh, 2 or 4? 5. 5. 11, 5. Right. Now we come to XP. XP is equal to X0 plus theta minus X0 times length 1 over RD to power 1 over B. Why the distribution are based on which manufacturer for a cylindrical roller bearing? Uh, one. Two. One is for uh, tapered roller bearing. Tapered roller bearing. Two for ball and Cylinder. So from table 11, 6, I will get x naught equals theta equals and b equals. Find me those two. Yeah. Open your book and find these values. <coughs> you will find it on page 601. If you do it correctly, it will not take you more than two. You do two or three maximum. If you are doing it correctly. Yeah. Usually in the exam we mention how many iterations you need. So yani whatever you do, whatever your starting point, as we said, do two iterations only. So it will be stated in the problem. So it uh, doesn't matter where I started? I will tell you that you do two iterations. Yalla shabab, x not equals to? 0 minus 2. Theta? 4.459. B? 1.4. Okay, fine. Now we come to RD. What RD equals to? This is desired reliability. Uh, tell me. You have this thing here. 
No. Read the statement correctly. What's the statement saying? Total reliability. What does it mean? Total reliability. Or both. Yes. And what did we say? What did we tell you about having systems in series? Multiply the reliability. You multiply. So the now what we have is called R set, right? Yeah. This system reliability, which equals I have two bearings. Reliability of bearing A times reliability of bearing B. This should equal what? 0.95. 0 0.95, right? Yes. Okay, so <coughs> I will use the square root. So nine. In this case, I'm assuming what? They both yeah, have the same. RA equal RB. Excellent. Assume RA equals RB. <coughs> okay, so this is your first assumption. Yes. Then when you come to the selection, things will change. Come on. And when you recalculate the reliability after you select the bearing, you will find that bearing A may have a higher reliability than B, and so on. Or the opposite. Does it matter? <clears throat> Most important that when you multiply them together, they should, more. they should be equal or more 0 0.95. So we assume that they are equal. So RA will equal RB, and it will equal what? Square root of 0 0.95. Why square root? It's right. not about square roots, huh? Just because I have two. Yes. If I have more, it will be different, huh? Yes. So I'll put it in this form so you remember. Come on. So it is the set to power one over n. N represents the number of bearings you have in the system. Mm. So if I have a system of six bearings, it will be one over six. And so on. Right. So now, according to this, RA will equal what? <coughs> 0 0.975. Okay? Right. So now we have the reliability. Can anybody find XP? So XP will equal to this correction factor for reliability 0 0.02 plus 4.495 minus 0 0.02 times len. 1 over 0 0.975 power 1 over 1.483. Yeah, Giving a push. It's 0 0.9. Zero point three. Zero point three nine five. Okay, so now we are done with XP. What else do I have to find? XD. XD. So we find the F A F D. What is F D sorry? For the cylindrical roller bearing. What is the load on cylindrical roller bearing? So three five six. Three five six zero. Good. So we are remaining with XD. So upon XD, so XD is equal to what? The life, desired life, divided by rated life. What is the rated life for cylindrical bearing? Million. One million, so 10 to the power 6. Desired life. In the statement, he's saying what is the life should be? 9,000 9, hours. 9,000 hours. So I have the life in hours. What is the speed of the shaft? 300 RPM. So if I have the life in hours, I should also have the speed. <coughs> No. of rotation, otherwise I cannot determine the line. So LD is equal to the life in hours times 60 times N, which is the speed in RPM. So 9,000 times 60 times 300 will give you LD. 16.2 million. 16.2 million. Point two then to power 6. Okay? So from here, xd will equal what? 16.2 then to power 6 divided by 10 to power 6. So 162 million. 162 million. Again? 
162 million. 162? Yes. So I take the from here. This one, so this would be 160. Oh, yes. Okay, right. So 162. Oh. So we have everything to calculate C10. So C10 equals 1.5 times 3.56. Um, converting it to kilonewton, come on. Times 162 divided by 0.39. 5 to the power 3 over 10. <coughs> Which one? 1.5 is uh, application time. Okay, got the theta. Thirty to four seven kilo newton. Okay, now we open table eleven three, where we have the cylindrical roller bearing. We have two series, zero two and zero three. Let's see all possible solution. So uh, one thing you remember from the statement, keep it in mind. In the statement he mentioned, the minimum shaft diameter based on strength is 24 millimeters. So it means in a ring, the bore, which is the diameter of the inner ring, minimum is 24. So I cannot pick a bearing that is 20 millimeter or mm. okay, or smaller than 24. It must be 24 and more. Okay. Greater. Why it must be 24 or greater? Because he said the minimum diameter. He did not say that the diameter of the shaft is this much. Because if he said the diameter of the shaft is this much, it means he fixed the bore size. You cannot use greater, you cannot use smaller. It's fixed. So the bore is fixed. You need to look for a bearing suitable for the load, which is usually the case. Usually, this is the case. The shaft design is fixed. And you need to look for a suitable bearing. Right. So now let's go back to the table. <coughs> we start with the force, right? C D. Yeah, we start with C10. C10. Okay? Now I have this as an option, by the way. 31.9. Someone would say why this is an option. Whenever we pick two bearings for the system, it's okay to go a little bit smaller. Why? Because maybe the other end, you are picking with a higher rated load. So reliability of bearing A is going to be greater than 0 0.975. The reliability of bearing B is a little bit smaller than 0 0.975. When I combine them, I get 0 0.95. Come on? So you keep this in mind. I will write the three possible answers, by the way, here. We have from 0 to 2 solutions. I have bore 35 millimeter that has a C10 equal what? 31.9 kilo. Okay? I have also bore 40 from the same series so, where uh, C10 equals to 41, 41 point something, huh? Point? Anybody know the book? 41 point? Point 0.8 Kilo Newton. Five. I will not, because 41 is greater than 32. 31.9 is very close to 32.5, huh? Five. For the second series, 0, 03 series, We have one suitable option, which is with a bore 30 millimeters. Huh? Okay. 
protection. 30 millimeter. Mm. What is the rated load? 36. Is equal to? 36.9. 36.9 kilonewton. So those are three possible options, by the way. We'll keep it to fix the last choice after we select the ball bag. Do you have time? Yes. yes. Why can't we go with like 44.6? It's much uh, larger. You, you don't want to go with the larger, because the larger is more expensive. Uh -huh. And you don't want to go beyond the 24 a lot. This is also another criteria. Right. Now we go to the ball bearing. 25. Okay. For the ball bearing. In the ball bearing, they have to calculate the equivalent load. The remaining items, like XB, XD, AF, they're all the same. There's only FE is, is going to change. So first we assume a starting point for FA over C0. So we go to this table. We start with an assumption. Let's assume that it is 0 0.056. So for that assumption, what is the value of x and y job? x is equal to 0 0.56. Huh? What is y equals to? Okay, will be done. Uh, zero. Zero. No? Uh, now we are on which side? This side. This side. We are looking at x2 and y2. So it is 1.71. So now I can calculate the equivalent load. So 0 0.56 times the rated load. What was the rated load on A? 1,780. Plus 1 1.71 times the thrust load, 890. OK? Tell us about Find me the equivalent load. So now it's only for, uh, for bearing gate. Since we have ah, we are done bearing it. Yeah. Now we are looking at bearing it. So, what is the equivalent load? Two five one eight point seven. Two five one eight point seven newton. So I can have this as a kilo newton. Two point five two kilo huh? Now I calculate C ten. C ten is equal again application factor the same. Now the equivalent load is two point five two. XD the same, 162, divided by XB the same, 0 0.395. Uh, but don't forget the exponent A. Here, what do we have? 1 over 3. 1 over 3. Why? It's because ball. it's a ball bearing. So I'm yelling, find me C tensor. Let's say one kilo newton. Where should we go? For the ball bearing selection. So let's select a deep groove ball bearing because it's cheaper. And remember, angular contact bearing usually is utilized in pairs. And I'm, I select one now. Come on. Five. So for deep groove ball bearing, the nearest is I have a 30.7. Uh, what do I need? 28. 28. Because before 30.7, there's 25.5, which is small. So I would go with this one. 30.7. Diameter is 40. So here I will select deep groove with ball 40 millimeter. It has a C10 equals to 30.7 kilonewton. I see bigger than this. So it is suitable now for as a first selection. What is my C naught? I have to do the iteration. I have to check. What is C naught from the table? Sixteen point six six kilonewton. Now what do we do? We check. We do the second iteration. Why? Because by selecting this bank, I have. FA over C0. Right. FA over C0 equals what now? FA is 0 0.89, uh, 890 newton, so it's 0 0.89 kilonewton. 
divided by 16.6. Yalla shawa, find me the value. Zero point zero five four. We are lucky, sir, huh? yes. because we assume the first is zero point zero five six. But I have to do interpolation now. Huh? Oh. So I think we are running out of time, sir. Huh? Yes. Well, still two minutes. Good. Do we have to like? Yes, <coughs> we have to make sure that it is the same, the same or still safe. That the rated load is greater than the calculated value. Uh, Victor, yes. you are, you are comparing uh, this value with what? I compare this value with the initial assumption. Uh. Okay, so we have in the table 0 0.42, then 0 0.56, 0 0.42, 0 0.56, and our calculation is 0. Point, up on 0. 0. 0.054. Now, the value of y for 0 0.42 is equal to 1. So this is 1.85 and this is 1.71. Yeah? Mm. Find this here. Find this one. Do the interpolation. So it will fall between. It is greater than 1.71, but it's going to be smaller than 1.85. 1.85. 1.85. Yeah. 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 No, it should be less than this one. It's 1.85. 1. 1. I'm asking, what is the value? 1.85 or? 85, yes, 85. 85. The 1.73. Now we calculate the equivalent load, 0. 0.56 times uh, one, 178 plus 1.73 times 890. Yalla shabab, get me a fee. Here it's going to be 2.54, huh? yes. around 2.54 kilonewton. Now recalculate C10. Take the va this value, divide it by 2.52, multiply it by 2.54. It's a very small change. Okay? Definitely it's, gonna, it's not going to reach 30.7. Anybody calculate the value? 2.52. Divide by <coughs> 8, one, multiply by 2.5. Yeah. How did you do it? Again? 2.52. No, so it's like this 2.54 divided by 2.52 times 28.1. Two point five four divided by two point five two multiplied by two eight point one. Twenty eight point three. Twenty eight point three kilonewtons. Still smaller than thirty point seven. So we stop it. You stop the iteration. You stop. What is your final selection? A big room ball bearing with a bore forty millimeter, and this is the rated load. Right. Uh, let's go back to this one. Now, which of those bearings will you select for the other end? You have one, two, three. three. And justify your selection. Uh, the one, the Bring in your mind your manufacturing cost, so three, two, two. So this is for the cylindrical. So yes, those are for the cylindrical. Khalas, for the ball bearing, Hassan al Amr. We selected a deep groove ball bearing with a 40 millimeter ball. We check the, uh, the greatest one, maybe? The, the greatest should be. The this uh, reliability is satisfactory. So, 30 is greater than 28. 
So it's going to be a little bit slightly, a little bit greater than 0.975. Take we go with Which the of those would you, say, would you go with? Number one. We go with the largest one. Go with one? Smallest. Yeah. Two Four. or three? One. Two. If you say one, raise your hand. One, two, three. Two, raise your hand. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. The correct answer is two. You know why? Why? Keep in mind, manufacturing time costs a lot. Now, if I make the shaft, I design the shaft such a way that both ends are of the same diameter, I will reduce what is called setup time. So, for manufacturing cost, it is much cheaper to have both ends of the shaft. The same diameter. Remember how we make the shaft, how we machine the shaft? Yes. Simply by lathe. So when you set the lathe to have a diameter of this much, because you set it for once, that's going to be for both ends. Um, unlike if you want to set it this one for 35 and the other one for 40, there will be a time consumed in the setup. Have a nice weekend. Victor. Yes. Could you explain why you choose 40 again? Because this one is 40. So it is cheaper to make the shaft to the same diameter.